So again, hello to everyone. I'm so happy to see you all. And to for those who are members of the New York Institute for Gestalt Therapy, I'm very honored to be here with you. And for those who are not members of the New York Institute, I hope you will become members soon. <laughs> So I, it's, a li it's a bit my home, the New York Institute for Gestalt Therapy. Uh, it's the source of my inspiration. And so I'm very glad that you are here. Um, my presentation tonight is um, about uh, the field and the concept of reciprocity. And it expresses a bit the development of my research or my thought um, which started um, from with the influence of Isidore Fromm many years ago when I was 23. I met Isidore in California at the Polsters. And then I, he became my therapist and I followed him in Europe and, and New York. And he uh, br uh, brought me to, the, to a deeper knowledge of Gestalt therapy. But since then I have understood well, I have understood what he has said in a certain way. We had, we just had, um, we had just, we are having um, an interesting debate inside the, the Institute uh, about the heritage of Isidore Fromm. And I think that I took from him what, what, I, what, what I could take. Uh, he used to say, uh, please say that this is what you have understood of what Isidore said. So I took from him, Mm, something that I, uh, probably it's not uh, what other people have uh, understood from him. And since then I developed um, the concept of field, uh, reciprocity, aesthetic knowledge, uh, contact boundary, um, according also to other experiences that I had, especially with Daniel Stern, uh, who was not a, a Gestalt therapist, but um, was very close to Gestalt therapy. And so he, he was very inspiring to me. And, and now also from neurosciences, um, th there are neuroscientists who have been also very inspiring to me. So the, what I will present to you is, has, has this ground. And I, I hoped uh, what I, I had prepared some slides because uh, Probably, I hope to be to to reach you in a clearer way. I'm sorry that I will have to uh, stop my you know the, the possibility to see each other because I will put on the slides now. But I hope that this will make my speech clearer. Also, considering that I'm not native English speaker, uh, and I will consider the um, also the society, the actual sufferings in our society. So this is the title of the speech, the concept of field and the practice of reciprocity. Uh, I will start very briefly with the concept of field uh, not entering into a discussion about the, what the field is, but just mentioning oh, where the concept of field derives from, from physics. Um, Michael Faraday and James Clerk Maxwell, they say that two or more interacting bodies do not constitute separate entities that exert an action at a distance on each other in an empty space, but are part of the same totality of the same physical reality, so the field that mediates their interaction. This is a the, 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 the definition of two physics. And Per Seferin and Goodman writes of organism environment field, which is a specific thing, to indicate the indivisible totality constituted by the interaction between the organism and its environment the subjective experience is not reducible, reducible to the individual. It emerges at the counter boundary. In their opinion, the matrix of experience is not individual subjectivity, but the field. They write in a famous passage in Gestalt therapy, the definition of an animal involves its environment. 
It is meaningless to define a breather without air, a walker without gravity or, and ground, an irresistible without obstacles, and so on for any animal function. The definition of an organism is the definition of an organism and vitamin field. So what I'm saying now cannot be defined without you, without what we are experiencing now at our contact boundary, without the Zoom, for instance. Um, so the field is a phenomenological concept which means that our glance is focused on the contextualized experience of both therapist and client at the contact boundary. Contextualized experience means that the experience is made of both. The context is, contains both the experience of both the therapist and the client. As it unfolds in the time of the interaction, this is a second concept of uh, the phenomenological concept and supported by an intentionality for contact. So these three uh, words are, uh, constitute the, con the phenomenological concept of field. Let's go for a moment now to our society, to, to what was before the, the pandemic and what is now, where we are missing our safe ground the air that we breathe is no longer sure. Uh, so we are experienced, as you know, as we all know, in a very difficult time. And the clinical evidences today are difficult. We will understand them better in the months, in the future, in the near future. But even before the pandemic, the clinical evidences were uh, manifesting a lack of ground, of, of, of sure ground. So we have anxiety disturbances, desensitization of the body, depression, dependent behaviors of various kinds, violence, problematic intimate relationships, concentration problems in children, eating problems, loss of sense of self and relational ground. So who am, am I for and who do I belong to? These are main questions that in general we see in our clients. And so how can we apply the concept of field in, in nowadays society, in, in our present society with this particular problems? The concept of ground experience is important. Um, I explained this in my book, The Now for Next in Psychotherapy, the cell therapy recounted in postmodern society. I don't want to go uh, he here in this, uh, in this uh, explanation. Maybe we can, if necessary, can say something later. But the idea is that the society uh, today has brought to a generation that uh, has as difficulties in the feeling of the sure ground, of the ground of security. It's difficult to breathe. It's difficult to feel sure in one's own position. It's difficult to identify oneself in front of the other. So this means that the aim of, of psychotherapy today Um, has to take this lack of ground into consideration. And our aim is now to develop new tools to help people to feel part of the human community in a way that is not desensitized. It's quite a different aim than the one when Gestalt therapy was founded, when the need to become an individ individualized and creative indi person was the main tool. Today, we have to switch our focus to develop the experience of a sure ground. So we are, we are in looking for new humanistic values from the old humanistic value of developing one's own power 
to the new value of recognizing the intentionality of the other. To see the other and recognize his or her intentionality. The new need is to live as interconnected people, to live with the awareness to be with. Psychotherapy has to support the ground experience today rather than the figure. So one cannot know what she wants until she doesn't feel on a sure ground. And this is different. This is the different society we are living on. We do not need anymore to separate from suffocating bonds, but we need to feel ourselves, feel our ground, and so orient ourselves to be with the other. So a safe sense of the ground can be built in meaningful contacts and relationships. Where can, how can we work on the sure ground? How can provide our clients a safe ground, the sense of a safe ground? From meaningful contacts and relationship, a sense of sure ground and the sense of self can come only from meaningful contacts. Each one of us wishes to reach a significant other and be part of a community in order to give their creative contribution. And as Persephone Goodman write, the lapse of community in political society is not reducible to the neurosis of individuals who indeed have become individuals because of the lapse of community. So this pandemic experience is bringing us, Gestalt therapists, back to the spirit of our founders. We need to uh, help people to be interconnected in a community. So building a sense of being with the other, this is what I try to develop. And the value of reciprocity, of reciprocity to rebuild the sense of the ground. This is how I will continue now. So we have three concepts, self, field, and reciprocity. If the self is made in contact with another, then we can focus on how mutual resonances create the specific phenomenological field of therapist and client interaction. The concept of dance of reciprocity includes the resonances, which are to me feelings and movements, and their mutual adjustments. Um, the healing dance that I have developed, you know, but not only me, also, for instance, Daniel Stern spoke of the dance uh, between therapist and client. This has to uh, consider three main concepts. One is the crucial role of the active presence of the therapist. Another is the resonance of each one to the movement of the other. And the other is the co-creation of a third reality, which is the dance, how they move together. And following this concept, I have defined the presence of the therapist with the concept of aesthetic relational knowledge. So in order to be attuned with the situation, the therapist can use her sensory knowledge, which can be um, seen with three criteria, aesthetic criteria. We can look at reciprocity between us and the client with these three criteria. The grace, the good form, is what we are doing, has what we are going a good form? Can we, can we feel it like a good form? The rhythm, the emotional regulation, like a, a borderline client that in one moment says, ah, you are a wonderful therapist, and the moment after says, you are a shit of therapist. How do we feel this rhythm? So the rhythm is, says something about the emotional regulation and the fluidity of the movements says something about the rigidity of the 
of the flexibility of the person. So let's say something about the anxiety and the seriousness of a suffering. The aesthetic criteria tell us how much spontaneity or anxiety client and therapist experience in their contact made, making. The more anxiety we, ex we experience in the contact making and the less spontaneity and the more anxiety, the more rigidity, lack of rhythm and lack of good form. Um, I, I would like to bring you now in, a, in another concept, which is uh, which I took from Daniel Stern and all the developmental uh, theoreticians and also from some res uh, contemporary researchers, the concept of synchronicity. So the role of movements in emotional attunement. Researchers on synchronicity have found that from the very first days of life, patterns of interaction between caregiver and child lay the foundation of the interpersonal synchronization or reciprocity. The primary forms of interpersonal synchronicity are closely coordinated with the systems that regulate child's arousal and attention. So when the child is frightened, mother's vocalizations calm his, him down and root him in the relationship. I think that Ruella will be very, um, will have much to say about this. And the synchronicity builds alliance these micro-emotional changes play an important role in the development, development of the child's capacity of self-regulation, especially with regard to the regulation of internal emotional states. Synchronic interactions are associated with emotional safety, with, which regulates emotional stress. So this concept is very important today to, reg, to, to, to provide the sense of sure ground that we were talking about. And attachment can be seen in Gestalt therapy as mutual creative adjustment. Uh, Daniel Stern says that the Gestalt of the movements of the mother is per a perceptive unit for the child. The child recognizes the mother from the Gestalt of her movements. And the dance made up by, by derailments and repairs between mother and child create the attachment. And Vittorio Galese, one of the discoverers of mirror neurons, speaks of intentional resonance. Amaniti and Ferrari in, speak of intentional self. These are all people I work with. And Gestalt therapy says that we look at the movement towards, we look at the now for next, so the intentionality, the movement towards, that defines the content and the contact process. So I think that attachment can be seen as a result of reciprocity in creative adjustments between caregivers and child as they are dense in meaningful contact. Um, I try to see the dance steps between therapist and client, not only between caregivers and child. And I define dance steps as procedural spontaneous actions of contact between the client and their psychotherapist. So um, I tried to work on a tool to observe their reciprocity in therapeutic and meaningful contact, trying to integrate intentional movement in therapist client interaction in procedural dance steps, which describe the unfolding of their contact making. And we can use the sensory intelligence of the field so the aesthetic relational knowledge to perceive and contextualize the intentionality of the client. I try to explain this in um, some example. The field expresses the unitary nature of the therapist client situation. What the therapist feels is somehow connected with the experiential field of the client and it can be used as an aesthetic tool. Therapist and client are part of the same situation. So we need to research on how they both change. The stomach cramps of a child become experience when the mother comes or doesn't come. And the anguish 
for a client becomes experienced when the therapist moves or doesn't move in front of it. Our ethics require to look at experience contextually, like George's Volans said, using our senses and being sensitive. We, and not only the client, change. So our feeling has to do with resonances in the field of, of, of what the client is saying. Attuning and resonating allow the therapist to know the blocked energy for contact. Therapy awakens the client's energy towards the other, his disowned intentionality for contact. And we could say that the experience of hope is for the client the embodied empathy of the perceived movement of the other. Hope comes from participating in the moment, moment, movements of the other. I, I want to give you a brief example about this. Um, the client um, looks at the third, my client looks at me and I feel that the, this client is suffering from um, being, um, uh, not being uh, recognized in his work, in his office. And when he looks at me, I can feel, like, with an empathic, em an embodied empathy, I can feel, um, how he feel how he is suffering that he's not recognized and he does a lot of things in his work and is not recognized. So I can identify with his feeling, but at the same time as the other, as the, ther the therapist, as the other side of the moon, I feel strangely disturbed by this, by this client feeling this. And I wonder how come I feel disturbed? Um, and if I, I try to understand what this feeling, what kind of meaning this feeling has in the life of the client, I can imagine that a caregiver has felt this uh, um, annoyance and if I go deeper into my feeling, I can imagine that this caregiver wanted to do something different, wanted the client to be good to, to her and not, uh, not being distracted. Um, so how come I feel, this, um, I, I feel this annoyance in front of this client? This is what I call the resonance that, that me as a therapist feel in front of this client. This resonance belongs to me. It's my own reaction to this client. But from the many things I can take from my ground experience, I take the annoyance. And this has a meaning which is connected with the client. So I know something more about the ground experience of this client about his previous contacts and and i i can, i know no now i know that um, this is part of the past of this client and if i i think of how the situation can change i wonder how can i change what should change in my feeling to to change the situation and so I, I, I start to think, this is just an example, you know, don't make a generalization, please. I start to think that with this client, I might change becoming much more caring for this client, caring what he, what he would like to tell me, what he would like to, to tell me to, to be recognized about. And I start to change and I see that all the situation becomes lighter. Okay, this is very quick. I hope that I gave you some idea of, uh, um, of the, the concept of resonance. The observation focus switches from the client to the phenomenological field, therapist and client co-create, and to reciprocity. 
In other words, the reciprocal act of move, moving towards the other in the therapeutic process. As Gestalt therapists, we don't aim at satisfaction of individual needs, but at co-creating a new experience of contact, which makes spontaneous movement possible. Uh, these are the dance steps, but I want to skip them. They are just how I call the dance steps. The aim of therapeutic reciprocity is to recognize the beauty of the client, how she has managed to keep herself vital in a difficult situation, and to provide a specific relational support for the client to develop her intentionality in contacting the environment. And finally, this is the last slide, I give you three questions, magic questions, in order to apply the aesthetic relational knowledge of the field and the concept of reciprocity with your clients and also good for supervision. The three questions are, what do you feel being with this client? If you take a client that you would like to understand better now, what do you feel being with this client? Just let any feeling come out. And then second, how does your feeling have to do with the client's life? And third, what could change in your relational experience with this client in order for the dance to be more spontaneous? So you can do this in the, um, with taking the example of one client of yours. And this is just to refer where I have written these three questions. And this, um, this is a special section of an APA journal that is going to be print soon. It's about uh, gestalt therapy during coronavirus. Okay. Now let's go back because it's half hour. Um, I will close now. I will show you other two slides after just to, about references and things like this. And now can I give a can I give a um, suggestion for the breakout rooms? We have breakout rooms now, right? Can I give a suggestion for breakout rooms? If you take the three magic questions, take a, pick up a client of yours that you'd like to understand better. And imagine yourself in front of this client in a, in a typical moment and what do you feel in front of this client? What is your resonance? And second, what, what do you think is the meaning of this feeling in the client's life? And third, how, what should happen for the situation to change? How would you change? How would the client change in order for the dance to be different, more spontaneous? Okay. So, seems a bit strange that uh, I cannot talk with you and ask you whether what I said was clear, but this is a schedule, right? Uh, very clear, very clear. Mar okay. Mar will, will Margarita, you, you're finished now um, yes. with your presentation. Um, yes. We, we can now uh, have, uh, we, we now have 10 or 15 minutes for a uh, a discussion of, of oh, questions no. and oh, comments. Okay, okay so Remember? I thought well, there were okay. the breakout rooms soon. Okay, so there are questions. Okay. Now that comes after. Okay. Just to clarify some of your points, people can ask okay. questions or make comments. Mm -hmm. uh, people can raise their hand. Um, and uh, Chair is uh, keeping uh, the order. No, uh, Frank? Yes. So it could be helpful if people, instead of writing their hand, can write down the name in the chat. So I. Yeah, I right, still, you, we cannot hear you. Oh, sorry. Better? 
yes, yes. Better, better. sorry guys so if it could be helpful if people instead of write the end because i can see anyone uh could just uh, write down the name in the chat so i can take the order of people okay if you want to speak ju just uh, write your name in the chat and i can uh, aware about you okay so i have the order and i can see i can see anyone so everyone sorry <laughs> very smart very Thank good you, solution Clara. okay <laughs> No one? People can just jump in too at this point if nobody's starting. Anybody who has, feels an op impulse right now, just <laughs> dive right in. Okay. I'm a little confused. We're, we're asking questions, obviously. Are we doing uh, breakout rooms too? That comes yes. next. That comes next, okay. But you already have people in the chat, Chiara. Okay, yes. So first Judith and then yes. Charlie. First, Margarita, I want to thank you for the PowerPoint presentation. It was very easy to follow, deep and clear at the same time. And I appreciate it. The depth, there was just one I missed that I would like to see again if possible. I don't know. It was the one where you spoke about the, the important change that in the old time, we could say that the focus was much on the individuality. And now we have to embrace and uh, focus on more how to be intercollective and how to be part of the human. Mm -hmm. yeah, it uh, was uh, maybe the third or fourth. Yeah, it was uh, about the new humanistic values. Yeah, and there were several on the same page. Mm This one. Yeah, it was actually another one, but this one is also very good. It was I another one? Yeah, I don't remember. It was you were quoting about, now let's see. Yeah. Maybe it was after, no, it was before this. Yeah, but maybe I don't want to take time with this. I got the other ones. It was before this one. Well, I can send the, the slides. That would you. be wonderful if you would sure. like that. And they were so clear and also beautiful. Thank you. So I can I send the really slides. I really appreciate sure. Thank you. If, uh, if Frank has the, 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 you know, if you know the people who joined, I can send. I can send you the slide, and you can send it to them. Yes, that, that, that would be very helpful to have the slides. Okay. I, um, yes, I can also. Charlie. Yes. Oh, <clears throat> Margarita, I'm um, wonderful. Yes. Talk. Thank you. I, um, and by the time Pearls left New York, uh, he was thoroughly focused on figure. Um, and this is a real uh, move. And I'm, I'm wondering what Isidore would think about the concept of reciprocity as you're using it. I love it. <laughs> I, I think he would be very critical as always. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, so many years have passed from his death and the society has changed a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, Charlie, you have done such a 
wonderful work with your timeline. Mm -hmm. oh, so putting, you. and I hope to meet you some conferences in the future to, to see what you have built in the last 10 years, for instance, you know, because many things have changed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. <laughs> the, the need for a sure ground is something that uh, is uh, for from 20, 10 years you know, now. Mm -hmm people yeah margarita isidore would be critical but he also would be respectful <laughs> yes yeah and, and it, it being being critical isidore would would be you know would want to restructure the meaning of the statement so his you know one of the things uh, saying that you probably know better than i do charlie is isidore would say gestalt therapy is about uh dancing feet and and loving heart Hearts and uh, there were three of them all together, a string of them. Hello. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's kind of like a dance and that involves reciprocity, a mutual attunement. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't mm -hmm. think Israel would be negative on reciprocity. Go ahead, bud. Thank you, Patty. Thank you. Okay, there is Mariana now. Mariana? Marianne. Okay, sorry. Ciao, Margarita. So, Ciao. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the speech. Uh, I'm very interested in the concept that you brought about resonance, because um, I'm not sure, but uh, uh, it seems to me that uh, uh, it was normally I call sympathy. And I'm curious if you use the resonance or sympathy as a, uh, how do you say, yes as the same concept or oh, what is the difference? Because for me, I remember that, um, I remember, I know that Pearls was used to say that when we work just with empathy, we bring just part of the field. When we work on uh, sympathy basis, we uh, include ourselves, and then all the field is complete. Mm -hmm. and, and that, uh, and then he made, well, sympathy made us make the ascent on the fact that we can bring the, the consequence of the act of our client at the consequence of our act. Mm -hmm. So that brings all the, the question of uh, what the client does to me and what I do to the client. No? So I, yeah. I'm curious of this, yeah. if you use resonance yes. in this way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mariano. This is, I, did, uh, I didn't uh, remember this from Peirce, so thank you very much for connecting uh, the, the concept of resonance to sympathy and to the idea of Peirce. Um, um, I think that, uh, well, Buella speaks a lot of resonance and we also had some dialogue about this. Uh, resonance is my uh, reaction, let's say, to the other. Um, resonance is the way I react to a masterpiece, for instance, you know, when you see a paint, a painting or a piece of art, what is your resonance? Um, per said that uh, the, we, we have to look at the client's suffering as piece of art, as a piece of art. So I connect this concept of resonance to the aesthetic um, aspect of, of this. Um, I speak of aesthetic resonance, not, bodily, not only bodily resonance, but aesthetic resonance. So when you look at a, a frame of Fontana, the painter who made this uh, canvas with the cuts, cuts on the canvas, why are these masterpieces? Because you resonate, so you vibrate in front of this frame, of this picture. And when we look at the client, we also vibrate in front of this client. When you look at, at the borderline client, who gives you the feeling of many pieces scattered all around, but then you have a whole sense of this client being, for instance, wanting to fight against society, I don't know, whatever, you know, or wanting to rebel against you who had imposed some rules. 
So this is the aesthetic resonance that I can have in front of this borderline client. And this gives the possibility to the client to be seen as a whole because the aesthetic quality is, ha, allows us to see the situation as a whole, not as scattered pieces. So this is how, what I, uh, how, what I uh, mean by resonance, the aesthetic uh, vibration of the therapist. And this is connected with neurosciences, you know, and with the idea of mirror neurons. This is what mirror neurons say, that uh, our mirror neurons charge when we see an intentional movement in the other. And also they charge when, when, we, see, when we see a masterpiece, because we are able to identify, to vibrate to the act of the artist seeing the masterpiece. So when we see the client, we are able to vibrate to what others have done to that client as if it were a masterpiece. Mm. Okay, Mariano. It's okay, Mariano. We can go with Sebastian that yes, wrote some. Go yes, go on. Thank you, okay. Margaret. So there is Sebastian that has not camera on. I don't know, Sebastian, if you can hear us and you want to say something or we can read uh, what you wrote on, on the chat. Yeah, yes, please. Uh, you can read what I wrote on chat. Yes, Margarita, I don't know if you can see, uh, Sebastian wrote that uh, he wants to understood well the situation between patients and therapists. With changing patients, we are changing ourselves through him or with accepting importance of his important feeling, right? Yes, please, explaining that situation. Does we, uh, with accepting importance of his, uh, of patients' feelings, uh, we are accepting uh, that and uh, that feeling is important for us in future and that is how we're changing ourselves or uh, we, we are changing. Uh, I didn't understood that part. So please, can you explain me that part? Mm. I'm, tr I'm trying to read. Mm. Situation between friend and girl with changing patient, we are changing ourselves through him with accepting. Her. Yes, you are a different person in front of a different client. Clients, yes. We we change. We, we are different persons in front of different clients. Yes, of course, yes, that I understood, but we are changing ourselves through that patient, right? Ah, I mean that uh, when you are with the client in that situation, with that, with that specific suffering of the client, you wonder, how could I change in, in order to create a different dance with this client? Yes, and that is how, how we are changing him with brave him, uh, to, to accept that situation would be difficult to him, right? Not only to accept the situation, but to create a different dance. Mm. Uh, like, uh, you know, the, the client uh, 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 is used to be, see, to be um, humiliated. And you change, this is a very simple thing, you know, and you as a therapist create a different dance, a different situation where the feeling of humiliation is no longer there, but there is a feeling of warmth and openness. Okay, okay, thanks. I really understood it, right? Thank you. Okay, now is Dan. Dan? Dan? Dan Bloom? Yes, yes. Hi. Hi. Okay. Hi. Hello. Margarita, I think Hi. you know how much I resonate with what you say <laughs> and with your face. Ciao. 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 Uh, 
I'm, I'm resonating now and smiling. Uh, thank you for that. Um, I mean, you've made a, and make, keep making a wonderful contribution to Gestalt therapy by paying attention, bringing us to pay attention to the ground instead of just the figure uh, and to the aesthetic. Um, your work resonates with mine and so much that I keep thinking when I see this, what's, wh why bother, <laughs> Dan, why bother? Uh, uh, when I approach the aesthetic as I've been doing for so long, I'm reminded of this, as you are, with aesthetic knowledge, and that uh, the aesthetic came from Baumgarten, who, uh, who looked at uh, Descartes' notion of the clear and distinct knowledge and said, no, wait, there's another knowledge that's unclear and indistinct, it's confusing. And that's the aesthetic knowledge. That's, mm -hmm. So we look at not what's clear in the figure, but what's unclear. So this is where I, the one point that I start questioning what, what you've been saying, that what comes up in the therapy session for me isn't what's clear in the, in the field, in the ground, figure ground, but what is unclear. So the knowledge that I'm getting, I'm not certain of. So that I'm not certain of what's going on on the other side of the moon, but yet I have knowledge. So that, my, so that I, it's something that I can bring to the situation tentatively so that when I enter the dance, I'm not sure of the movement until I engage with the other. And mm -hmm. what's the figure that emerges is one that the other participates in. And that's how certainty emerges in contacting. So that I change with knowledge that comes from the interaction, not from something that I know independently. So that's what I wonder about in the in, in the and how I change with confidence. I, the confidence comes from the interaction. Um, I love the notion of reciprocity very much. And I think that we have to say a lot more about that in terms of our notion of one another in the broader field. And I'm thinking now of adding to it responsivity and I'm not gonna say more about that. And Margarita, welcome. <laughs> and I, 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 my heart can't be more open. <laughs> Thank you. Thank many, you, Dan. Many times. Thank you. Many, 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 many times. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so now Olivier. Olivier? Yes, yes, yes. Hello to everyone. And thank you, Margarita. I have, I have one. Uh, um, uh, it, it's very basic, my question. It's about the third of your magic questions. I was puzzled um, with the notion of trying to get into a more spontaneous dance. How can, how can you do that? I mean, I, yeah, it evokes some ideas with me, but um, you cannot go directly to spontaneous. So, um, yeah, there's something puzzling in that question for me. Can you say a few words? Uh, can we go direct? Can you say it again? Can can we go directly to spontaneous? Yeah, the third magic question you I think it was what could change in order for the dance <clears throat> to be more uh -huh. spontaneous? And I, I guess you were talking about a, a therapy situation uh, between therapists, therapists and clients. And yes. 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 And the, your question is why we can't go directly to? How do you proceed to be more spontaneous or for the dance to be more spontaneous is my question. Mm, I think oh, this, is, this is a bit, you know, uh, articulated and complex. But the main idea is that when you are the therapist, you are on the other side of the moon of the experience of the, of the client, then you can dance with this client. And in dancing with this client, you know what is the habitual uh, contact schema, let's say, contact process that the client uses to, to, you know, to do. And then you can provide a different, you can become a different other side of the moon who provides what is missing or what, what is wished 
to provide a different dance. Mm. This is how you can make the dance more spontaneous. Does exactly. Not, oh my god. Wait, that's not my book, right? I no. It's in Italy. No, it's in Italy, but it's similar type. Yeah, wow. boxes are different. Yeah. And it has that similar effect. Yes, yes. Nice. Yes. I love that. Oh, that piece. Beautiful. We should mute when we come back, yes? Ciao, Nino. <laughs> Ciao Margarita. I'm sorry, my battery stopped working. Let's see if this works again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So, I just like this picture. I like to say the, the the switch of our paradigm to support the change in the field rather than in the in the client. Hmm which means to support the change also in ourselves and better in the dance that we have with our client. And I wanted to underline that this implies an ethics of otherness. This is the book that the, the proceedings of the Taormina conference and the, it, the aesthetic of otherness. No? But here I wanted to underline the ethics of otherness, which is a paradigm that allows us to go beyond the narcissism. In the narcissistic uh, culture, we aim to be very good therapists, to do the right move. And if, if the client doesn't improve, doesn't get better, we feel guilty. We feel that we have not done what we were supposed to do. Well, but if we have the, the ethics of otherness, the ethics of looking at the intentionality of the other and to our resonance to that, then we can focus on the, on the being together, on the dance, and what, is, what heals is the dance, not, not the therapist. So we, we can relax our narcissistic aim to be very good and then to feel guilty if something goes goes wrong. Mm. Yes. Um, and this is just a summary. Reciprocity as clinical tool of the concept of the phenomenological field, supporting the ground experience in uh, pandemic times. Aesthetic relational knowledge of the therapist, a way to apply the concept of field and relationality, emerging movements, and the now for next, and the dance of reciprocity. And, and these are the references that I would like to send to maybe, I don't know, I will see with Frank if we can send them around. Or if you want to have these slides, you can write to, to this info. info Thank you, Margarita. Thank you. So now we will just move into our discussion. Okay. Yes. Um, Frank, I have in my list uh, you and Stefano from the previous uh, discussion. Oh, okay. I have you and Stefano before the okay. breakout room, okay? If uh, Stefano okay, wants to continue or you. Uh, I would like... Um, I, see, would okay. like I, I, I would like Go to... Ahead, 
to ask more details about uh, this uh, characteristic of uh, fluidity of the this uh, special uh, co-generated states that you name dancing dance. Mm. Uh, I did you finish? Mm. Yes. I know what you mean because I have read your book. I have read more than one time your book. And um, I, I don't, I wouldn't define the dance like a fluidity, uh, knowing what you mean. Or at least I thought, I think I know what you mean. Uh, the dance doesn't mean that, uh, that uh, we are fluid. It means that we see each other in fullness of senses and we also differentiate the one from the other. Yes. So the dance for me is to be very aware of, of myself and see the other. So to be at the contour boundary with the fullness of senses and to, to regulate myself with the other. I think it's a different concept than fluidity, but... Yes, yes, uh, it's clear yeah. the difference. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. So... Frank? Yeah, what I wanted to uh, just offer um, in terms of uh, some of the understandings here of um, uh, sympathy and um, how, uh, for me, it's very interesting to think of resonance in terms of sympathy and sympathy as in vibration and such is something I use in, you know, as a model for teaching, tuning forks, okay? And the, the concept would be essentially that if your client is resonating at one pitch and the energy experience of that is how, whatever your whole experience is, the question is what's blocking you from resonating or moving with? We all know tuning forks if these are the exact, exact same structure as they are, then one pitch creates an effect on the environment of the other one. And so that's a field experience where the field changes and the other picks up the vibration and goes off on its own. So if you are the therapist that can basically experience your client's energy, experience their experience in some way, in some way, and still be your own person, then you have that to work with. You have that resonance to work with. In turn, you can re come back to them with something that also effectively creates a resonance for them, something yes. that they, they would benefit from. Yes. So it's a very it, it, simple it, it, understanding there, and, and, uh -huh. and it, it applies yeah. to field theory as in physics. So it's it's very you know the the, the difference in 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 physics is that in in science is that you know when when we are not of the same structure exactly, mm -hmm. we uh, we have what's called force resonance, and force mm -hmm. resonance simply means that you 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 move with that resonance and you carry it further, you enhance it, you make it louder. And that is why uh, all instruments, most all instruments, acoustic instruments like a guitar or piano are structured that way to receive this resonance, to be able to, you can play any key on a piano and get the sound. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be the exact structure. So it's a model for being a, a, a therapist. Uh, some therapists yes. may not be able to uh, work with 88 keys on a, you know, of people, mm. if you understand yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Sometimes Thank we have you. to stick to that. You know. Thank you. It's not a question. No? It's just a, a no, useful just, comment. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Right resonance. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so now there is like Philip, uh, Peter Philipson. Sorry. Hi. Yes. I really enjoyed your talk, Margarita, and it resonated well with me. Uh, one bit which is about again about fluidity that i uh, value 
the times when we're not fluid, um, where we've both moved away from our fluid places and are clumsy and step on each other's toes and have to work together to find something new where we can be in a fluid dance together. So uh, uh, maybe difference in emphasis in that place. Hmm. Oh, thank you. I agree with you. I, I'm not, I don't use the word fluidity. This is Stefano's word. I okay. agree with you. No, no, I agree with you. It's just... mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. This can uh, all start to sound a little too cozy. And I think we all know that therapy is messy and that uh, Margarita, you're putting forth uh, wonderful, clear ideas and concepts that help us orient and stay grounded and it's fundamental. But I don't mm -hmm. think you're saying that we have seamless work at all. It, that would be what I would think. Mm -hmm. You don't think that, say it again. I don't think that you're saying that the mm -hmm. work should be seamless. No, I, no, 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 sure. Yeah. That resonance is something we, uh, it's an idea, it's a concept and foundational, but that mm -hmm. the work is messy and there are lots of moments of disruptions and, you know, ruptures, many ruptures and kind of pushing and shoving in a very gentle way that happens. The rupture is already a resonance. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Margarita, there is Heidi. Hi. So I'm interested, Margarita, in this idea of aesthetic resonance and your distinction, I think you were making between that and like a, a bodily, just a bodily resonance. Um, I'm thinking about what Frank was saying with the tuning forks and as a, a musician, as a violinist, I'm thinking about, you know, when I hold a violin and then I feel the resonance against my body, you know, and then I play with somebody else and I feel their resonance and the vibration um, combining with my own. Uh, I feel it in a felt sense. And I'm thinking about like Genlin's, you know, that term felt sense in the fullness of our senses and how that is distinct from aesthetic resonance in your view? Um, how is if this? Is. Yes, can you repeat what, you, what is this? Yeah, so like- A little bit slower. No problem. You were saying um, when you were talking about aesthetic resonance mm -hmm. that there was maybe a distinction and I don't know if I got that right um, from solely like a bodily resonance mm -hmm. And I wondered if there was something I was missing there because I'm okay. thinking for me, aesthetic resonance, you know, playing music, um, connecting with people in that way, even seeing art is a felt sense of mm -hmm. um, vibration and primarily for me as a bodily experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, of course it's always bodily but what I mean by resonance, aesthetic resonance has to do with the, with the ground experience of the therapist. Uh, like um, when I'm in front of a client, a lot, a lot of things come to me also from my past I, uh, that teach me something about the client. You know? mm -hmm. So my, I'm a second child, I'm a second last child. And when I'm in front of a first child, I immediately understand I'm in front of the first child. Um, because I, I, know, I know a lot of things like uh, the way I, I put my body in terms of Merleau-Ponty, for instance, like the way I put my body in front of the adults, of, of peers, being a second child. A first child puts his or her body in a different way because he has learned to be in the world and with more space mm -hmm. then of course this is not always the case but it's just an example so the the aesthetic resonance has to do not only with the body but also with the lots of knowledge that we have at an aesthetical mm -hmm. level 
of our body being uh, uh, located in the space and in the world. And also, uh, you know, a lot of um, experience that I have in my, in my ground and I can, and, and they come to figure when I see a client. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand I, um, that, um, I don't know, is it clear or? I think so. Um, hmm. So there's, the, it seems like there's also the, just the knowledge that's maybe separate from solely kind of the bodily, um, uh, what's picked up from the body. What yeah, you know, because, what you have, mm -hmm. yeah. Aesthetic, like Dan was saying before, is anything that is related to senses. It means related mm -hmm. to senses. Mm -hmm. So it's the way we know the world through our senses. Mm -hmm. So using my senses, what can I know of this client uh -huh. and of our relationship, our dance? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, could I just add about the, uh, just for, again, just to be clear, um, uh, as a therapist, we, 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 we would not become the tuning fork. You know, that's not the idea. Uh, example would be you know, your meds and in some form of resonance. You do not want to become that other person. So you need to just have some understanding, let's say, that resonates. Mm -hmm. And Margarita, this is, for me, this is also about the dance in that, uh, what you were mentioning. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because for me, like the sense of and we're two different bodies, but we have to match up in some way, you know. So someone might lift me up, or or bump into me and knock me over. Whatever the exchange is going on, the point is to continue in that rhythm in some way to pick up the rhythm. Mm -hmm. Again, and somehow we're. Frank, your feet freezing, so we aren't getting it. Yeah, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Okay, I'm not sure where it cut off. Yeah. But I was just just uh, bringing back to going back to the concept of the dance. It's to use all of our senses, and um, this is a. No, Frank. it's not working. No, no, it's not working. Again, the felt sense. <laughs> I'm aware we have five minutes. Yeah, yeah. No, Frank. Sorry, I, I don't know what's going on with my connection. Uh, I don't know if anyone can hear me right now. Not really. So at this point, uh, Jennifer, can you hear me? I can. We can. I can hear you now. You were coming in and out before, but now you're clear. Okay. Uh, well, we, we have to um, officially wrap up this meeting uh, so we can end at three. And again, if anyone wants to follow up later, uh, we won't stop the meeting, but we can um, talk afterwards. But we need to officially end in a few minutes. So uh, what we had talked about is maybe ending with a closing, uh, a go round of just, uh, you know, everyone just sharing a word or two, literally just a word mm -hmm. or two about your experience right now. Mm -hmm. And if we could finish with that, we will be done. I want to say, Margarita, thank you so much. I'm happy to see you and hear you. Uh, 
one thing that I'm walking away with amongst many is being reminded, which we spoke in our small group, to, of the value of the ground and not to get caught in, in figures, figure, but to um, have the ground be figural too. Yeah. In this time, that's really helpful for me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Adam. Keep safe. <laughs> you too. Mm -hmm. My word is satisfied. Thank you. Bye, Peter. Yes, I was thinking very, very pleased. Thank you, Margarita. And it's great to see everybody. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Margarita. It's been a pleasure to hear your ideas and to have a chance to think about them and discuss them with people. Thank you, yes. Susan. I don't see you, but I could recognize your voice among thousands. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Margarita. You. In, addition, in addition to listening to what you have to say, I'm also so pleased to see your face and see you. I haven't seen you in a while. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Bart. Thank you, Margarita. Well. Thank, Thank you, Margarita. You. Thank Bye. you so much. <clears throat> Thank you, Margarita. Thank yeah. you for being part of my ground. Yes. Thank, Thank you. Thank so you so much. much. Thank you. I, I love seeing say, your face and you brought so much to us. I would also I love you. say I would also say thank you. Nourishing would be my word and appreciation how you can find very clear words for such a subtle process that this dance is. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Judy. Thank you so much. Feeling the sacred reciprocity here, the seeing and being seen and the offering and receiving, feeling replenished. Mm -hmm. Thank, love, you, Margarita. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Gaila. Thank you, Gaila. Thank you, Margarita, for pulling all of this together and being here with us in the Zoom. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> thank, you. thank you to Yael for working really hard uh, with Frank to make all of this come off. Thank you, Yael, wherever you are. And Kiara, thank you for your leadership. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I'm glad to be in community with everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Also, thank you very much for everything, the presentation, the work. It has been really rich to be in contact with everybody and also thank to the New York Association to have opened this to everybody. Thank you a lot. It's been so good in this time thank to you. be with you. Thanks. I want to also thank you, Margarita. I appreciate hearing both us similarities and engaging uh, with our differences. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Margarita. Before everybody, I've, I've appreciated the reciprocity with more distinction and the ground. That's that's an active ground that we need to look at more. Thank you. Thank you, Perry. Thank you, Margarita. You make Isidore proud. You're certainly his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Your clarity and precision in language. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. <laughs> Margarita, this has been wonderful. Just I, before people all sign off, I just want to say, as president, you have kicked off our my my final year here uh, with our official first uh, you know educative meeting here, and we are so so lucky to have you. It was a wonderful presentation. Um, I am. I also want to uh, say thank you all for newcomers who have joined us for this meeting. This was uh, really, I hope, uh, to give you a, a good flavor of what we have to present here at this institute. Please consider joining us. Uh, yes. Go online yes. and become a member so we can see become you again. Become a member, and, yes. <laughs> yes, and include you in the listserv and our conversations and such. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you all. Thank you, my there. team, Gail. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, bye, everybody. everybody. Bye, bye. 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 B
Thank you. Bye thank bye. you, Jennifer. Thank Jennifer, you. thank you, Jennifer, so much. Wherever you are <laughs> out there, you. Jennifer, make me the host again. <laughs> <laughs>